Tracy and Emily. Seriously. Emily's here. So we're going to slide down and share, guys, because Tracy is now here. Yep. <laughs> and what'll happen I'm trying. He's got my back. He's got my face force. off my back. No, you're going to be Space Force. <laughs> okay. I was like, Tommy was already. So when they called Space Force, it's all still going to be Space Force. Now he'll introduce you. These guys are going to come to the Good morning. Good morning. Welcome. I'm Second Lieutenant Hugh North of the Overlake Composite Civil Air Patrol Squadron. Today I'll be your master of ceremony. There will be multiple times during today's ceremony while I will give you instructions. Thank you for your cooperation and compliance. On behalf of the Reeds Across America organization, the Washington Wing Civil Air Patrol, and the Tahoma National Cemetery, we want to thank you for joining us here today as we celebrate the mission to remember the fallen, honor those who serve and their families, and teach the next generation the value of freedom. We ask that to start the event, will you all please join me in a moment of silence to remember the fallen, prisoners of war, and those missing in action and honor those who have served and are serving this nation's great armed forces. During the national anthem, attendees not in uniform should remove their caps and place their hand over their heart. Attendees in uniform should render the hand salute at the first note of the national anthem. Ladies and gentlemen, please stand for the posting of the colors by the Pacific Region Championship Color Guard Team from the Overlake Composite Civil Air Patrol Squadron. The singing of the national anthem by Sydney Andrews, a sophomore from White River High School, and the invocation by Chaplain Bill Adam, the Pacific Region Civil Air Patrol Deputy Chaplain. Cadet Commander, give your squadron attention. Color Guard, post the colors.
Cadet Commander, give your squadron present arms. Cadet Commander, give your squadron at ease. Let us bow our heads in prayer. On this day as we conduct this Reese Across America ceremony here in Washington State, we thank you, O God, our Father, for all who by brave commitment have given their lives for this country. We realize that none of us cherish the thought of having to pay the supreme price of death for our country, which these men and women have had to pay. Nevertheless, we still find men and women like these who, each knowing the price they might have to pay, have been willing to put on the uniform of their country and go into battle. We are thankful for the men and women of bravery like these who have been willing to give, even give their lives for the peace of this world and the freedom that we enjoy here this morning. We are thankful also for the men and women who were able to be with us today in order to lay these wreaths, giving honor to those who faithfully served. We are grateful for their dedication, their dedicated service to their God, their country, and their fellow man. May your spirit of guidance go with them that they may continue to be a channel of service to others and impress upon us all as we depart from this place later today the importance of sacrificial giving of ourselves in service to our God, our country, and our fellow man. In your most holy name we pray. Amen. Thank you, Chaplain.
Please be seated. Thank you all for joining us here today. We are very fortunate to have a few special guests with us today. First, we have several Gold Star families with us today. We cannot begin to fathom the loss you have suffered and hope that you know we are all indebted to you and your family. We also have with us Congresswoman Kim Schreier, Washington's 8th District. 446th Airlift Wing Commander, United States Air Force Reserves, Colonel Scott A. Meyer, and wife Connie Meyer. Covington City Council Member Elizabeth Porter, Covington City Council Member Deborah Harstock, Washington Wing Civil Air Patrol Commander Colonel Brett Dolnick, and Pacific Region Civil Air Patrol Deputy Chaplain Lieutenant Colonel William Adam. This year, across the country at more than 4,225 participating locations like this one, there are millions of Americans gathering safely as one nation to remember, honor, and teach. We are all proud to be Americans that live in a free society made up of many people from many walks of life. The freedoms we enjoy today have not come without a price. Lying here before us and in cemeteries throughout this nation are men and women who gave their lives so that we can live in freedom and without fear. We can worship as we see fit. We can raise our children to believe as we do. We are free to vote for the leaders of our choosing. And we have the right to succeed and the right to fail at whatever endeavor we wish to pursue. The United States of America was founded on the ideals of freedom, justice, and equality. Our nation stands as a shining beacon of liberty and freedom to the world. We thank those who gave their lives to keep us free, and we shall not forget you. We shall remember. Today, more than ever, we reflect on our nation's veterans and active duty service members who have had and continue to fight to protect the innocent and the oppressed. This nation has always been first to stand for the freedom of people from around the world. Many of you here today have answered that call and served your country well. For this, we say thank you, and we are honored to know you. There are many men and women serving today in all branches of the military, here at home and in places far away that many of us have never heard of. These men and women are part of the best trained, best equipped force in the world. We honor them and their families for the sacrifices they make each day to keep our country safe from terrorism, hatred, and injustice. Quoting our 40th United States President, Ronald Reagan, freedom is never more than one generation away from extinction. We didn't pass it to our children in the bloodstream. It must be fought for, protected, and handed on for them to do the same. Or one day, we will spend our sunset years telling our children and our children's children what it was once like in the United States, where men were free. Today, we show a united front of gratitude and respect across the United States of America as we remember the fallen, honor those who serve and their families, and teach the next generation the value of freedom. Excuse me, cold fingers. I would like to invite Congresswoman Kim Schreier to provide a few remarks. Good morning to all of you, and thank you, Hugh, Lieutenant North, uh, for that lovely introduction. I want to thank uh, Wreaths Across America, our Washington Wing of the Civil Air Patrol, and the Tahoma 
National Cemetery for organizing this event and hosting us here today. It is an honor to be here. I'm also proud to represent almost 50,000 veterans in the 8th District. And I am grateful to say a few words to remember and honor our nation's veterans. The holidays are a time when we come together in whole community with our family and our friends. And because of this, we think of joy at this time of year. But with that joy, for many, there can be loneliness too. And as many of you here know, the holidays, when there's an empty seat at the table, can be a, a lonely time who, for those who have lost loved ones in the line of duty. And while I cannot take away that pain of loss, I am hopeful that our wreathing ceremony today will serve as a sign that so many of us feel your pain and share your community. And I hope you will see it as a token of our gratitude for fallen service members' sacrifice in the name of our country and freedom and also the well-being of families here uh, in, in bearing this loss. I also briefly want to just acknowledge the current today loneliness that some feel veterans feel during the holidays. Sometimes it's social isolation, sometimes it's the trauma of war, but I want all of you to know because we are mindful of mental illness and the high rates of suicide in veterans that we have help. Please call if you are feeling lonely or depressed and need help, 988 and press one. They have resources to help and they will help. I also want to highlight two very important programs that I am so proud to take care to take part of. One of them is for our Vietnam veterans. Thank you for your service. Uh, the Vietnam era veteran pinning program is a way for me to personally on behalf of a grateful country that never showed its gratitude to officially welcome you home and thank you for your service and to do it on a one-on-one -on -one way uh, personally. So please contact my office and I would love to meet you personally. I also want to tell you about the Veterans History Project. Uh, what we read in the books is brief and it is formal and it does not paint the full picture of the military or veterans or of war and it is so important that we know your stories. We preserve your stories, your documents in the Library of Congress so that generations to come forever will know your stories and will see the human face of war. Also, please get in touch with my office and we can help connect you with the Library of Congress. Finally, I wanna thank all of our veterans here today for fighting for freedom. I wanna thank your families. I wanna thank you all for braving the cold and being out here, hopefully with hand warmers and foot warmers to honor all of those who served. Happy holidays. Thank you, Congresswoman Schreier, for your kind remarks. I would now like to invite Colonel Scott A. Meyer, the 446th Airlift Wing Commander, United States Air Force Reserves, to provide a few remarks. Good morning, everyone. What a a great crowd to come out here on a beautiful morning. We even have the mountain showing its head today. Uh, very rare this time of year. But uh, it's, it's amazing the, the, the people who had come out here to honor our veterans this early in the morning in the cold. I, I thank you all. But, uh, and we got to hear the beautiful rendition of the national anthem. You can get a, 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 a clapper for that. That was amazing. Yeah. Chaplain, thank you. That was a, a wonderful uh, benediction there. So, good morning. It's a it's an honor and privilege to stand before you on this solemn occasion to remember the fallen, honor those who serve, and teach the next generation the value of freedom. The theme of wreaths across America this year is simple yet profound: serve and succeed. Those we honor today embodied that theme. 
When you place a reef today, you will notice the space between a person's birth and death. The symbolic half inch of stone that represents the entirety of a person's life. This half inch of stone encapsulates the fullness of a person's life. It is a reminder of the impact one can have by serving our nation and communities with our time, our careers, or even our lives. The origin of Reefs Across America organization serves as a, a poignant example of this concept. In 1992, the Worcester family, with a surplus of reefs from their tree form, collaborated with volunteers and organizations like the American Legion, the VFW, and the Civil Air Patrol, like these, these great looking young men and women over here. They placed reefs on the uh, graves of, at Arlington National Cemetery. The act, this act of, con of kindness grew into a nationwide movement with the aim this year to place 2.7 million wreaths in 4,000 locations, a testament to the enduring spirit of service. Each wreath we place today is composed of 10 balsam bouquets, symbolizing the 10 special qualities of every veteran. Belief, love, strength, honesty, humility, ambition, optimism, concern, pride, and their hopes and dreams. The evergreens represent longevity and endurance, and the red bow signifies the great sacrifice. The forest scent embodies purity and simplicity, and the circular shape symbolizes eternity. As we participate in this act of remembrance, we remember those who served and sacrificed for our great nation. At Tacoma National Cemetery alone, over 1,500 volunteers will place 2,820 wreaths on the graves of our veterans, ensuring that their legacy of service is not forgotten. Today we place wreaths for veterans like Army Master Sergeant Wilburn Ross, a Medal of Honor recipient buried here in 2017. In October 1944, at a battle in France, with a light machine gun, Private Ross held back nine German counterattacks facing deadly fire and remaining alone in his forward position after running out of ammunition, he kept the counterattacks from reaching his company. His 3rd Infantry Division unit had been greatly weakened by earlier attacks. Private Ross's heroic acts broke the counterattacks and saved his unit. After the war, Private Ross became a career soldier. He retired from the Army in 1964 to DuPont, Washington, where he lived the remainder of his long life. A memorial plaza in DuPont honors his valor and service to the nation. We also pay tribute to Air Force Lieutenant Colonel Edward Saylor, who was born in 1920 and died in 2015 in Sumner, Washington. He enlisted at Fort George Wright, Washington, near Spokane, and, uh, and trained as an aircraft mechanic and flight engineer. While serving in the 89th Bomb Squadron in Columbia, South Carolina, he volunteered for a secret and dangerous mission. A little more than four months after the Japanese bombing of Pearl Harbor, the United States struck back on April 18, 1942 with a daring Doolittle raid. Sailor served as a mechanic and flight engineer for this historic event, even rebuilding an engine on one of the B-25s on the deck of the Hornet while underway to Japan before the flight. Sailor would go on to receive his commission and retire as a Lieutenant Colonel with 28 years of service. Lieutenant Colonel is, Sailor is a recipient of the Distinguished Flying Cross and the Congressional Gold Medal. Another reef will be placed for Mary Jean Sturdivant, another Congressional Gold Medal of Honor recipient. She is remembered for being a trailblazer for the Women Air Force Service Pilots, better known as the WASPs. Mary Sturdivant was born in Bend, Oregon and died in Graham, Washington. She was one of three women to enter a civilian pilot program at Southern Oregon University and graduated with a certificate and her pilot's license. During World War II, she entered the war training service program at Eastern Oregon College. She became a chief instructor and was accepted into the famous WASPs. 
in February 1944, and she served until the end of the war. These are just a few of those we honor today. You may have loved ones here with their own stories and memories to share. When you look across this beautiful cemetery and read these veterans' names, you will see the best part of America. People from all walks of life, every religion and creed joined together under the same oath to support and defend the Constitution of the United States. You will see the same today if you walk into any ship, company, or squadron. The greatest young men and women this nation has to offer joining to train and prepare for any threat to our nation's freedoms and interests. It's why I continue to serve. It's why those we honor today served. It's why many of you continue to serve in our communities, both in and out of uniform. As we lay wreaths at these gravestones and say the names of the veterans aloud, let us reflect on their lives and equally important on our own. Remember, honor, teach these three actions, the mission of wreaths across America organization, a rich our own lives and the collective legacy we leave behind. Today, let us ponder the question, what do you want to do with your life? As we reflect on those who came before us, let their sport stories inspire us to live lives of service, leaving a legacy to be remembered, honored, and taught for generations. Thank you. Thank you, Colonel Meyer. I'd also like to invite Covington City Council member Elizabeth Porter to provide a few remarks. Thank you, Congresswoman Schreier and Colonel Meyer for your presentation today. Uh, on behalf of the city of Covington, it is our honor and privilege to be here today to give thanks to all of the volunteers that have come out on a very cold and uh, winter morning in the middle of a holiday season, taking time out of your busy lives to come here today to lay these wreaths and give honor and remembrance to those who fought for our nation. My father was a veteran. He lost two brothers to war. Councilmember Hartsock's son is <clears throat> uh, deployed right now. He was supposed to be home on leave and his plane is stuck somewhere. So we give, we know full well uh, the, the honor and the thanks for you all to be here today to help honor those that have gone before us. So again, on behalf of the city of Covington and the council members, thank you so much for taking time to be here today. Thank you, Ms. Porter, for your kind remarks. Wreath bearers, front and center. encourage every volunteer here today who places a wreath on a veteran's grave to say that veteran's name aloud and to take a moment to thank them for their service to the country. It is a simple, small act that goes a very long way to keeping the memory of our veterans alive. Remember, we are not here today to decorate graves. We are here to remember not their deaths, but their lives. Each wreath is a gift of appreciation from a grateful America.
These live balsam fir wreaths symbolize our honor to those who have served and are serving in the armed forces of our great nation and to their families who endure sacrifices every day on our behalf. To our children, we want you to understand that the freedoms you enjoy today have not been free, but have come at a cost that someday you may be asked to pay yourself. As a nation standing together, we can defeat terrorism, hatred, and injustice. Thanks to our veterans, we have the freedom to do just that. Cadet Commander, give your squadron attention. United States Army Memorial. Sergeant First Class Mazi Akil, United States Army, assisting Gold Star Mother Saudi McVeigh, honoring her son, Private Sean Bryce McVeigh, United States Army, assisted by Cadet Chief Master Sergeant Ryan O'Neill, will now lay the wreath honoring all those who served and are currently serving in the United States Army. United States Marine Corps Memorial. Staff Sergeant Stefan Dykus, United States Marine Corps, assisting Gold Star Mother Iris Saravia, honoring her son, Staff Sergeant Donovan Walters, United States Marine Corps, assisted by Cadet Senior Master Sergeant Patrick Martin, will now lay the wreath honoring all those who served and are currently serving in the United States Marine Corps. United States Navy Memorial. Private Noah McKinnon, United States Marine Corps, assisting Gold Star Father Jay McNabb, honoring his son, Petty Officer First Class Mark Richard McNabb, United States Navy, and Gold Star Wife Katie Walker, honoring her husband, Lieutenant Commander Charles Z. Walker, United States Navy, assisted by Cadet Technical Sergeant Sania Ribinina will now lay the wreath honoring all those who served and are currently serving in the United States Navy. United States Air Force Memorial. Staff Sergeant Aaron Moore, United States Air Force, assisting Gold Star wife Pat Trefney Ford, honoring her husband, Sergeant Craig D. Ford, United States Army, and Gold Star mother Jane Hughes, honoring her daughter, Staff Sergeant Danielle Hughes Crone, United States Air Force, assisted by Cadet Captain Randolph Halim will now lay the wreath honoring all those who served and are currently serving in the United States Air Force. United States Space Force Memorial. Airman First Class Dayton Erickson, United States Air Force, assisting Gold Star Mother Tracy Carter, honoring her son Specialist Thomas Carter, United States Army, and Gold Star Mother Emily Cribb, honoring her son Staff Sergeant Ray Lee Loonsbury, United States Army, assisted by Cadet Second Lieutenant Breton Natale will now lay the wreath honoring all those who served 
and are currently serving in the United States Space Force. United States Coast Guard Memorial. Chief Petty Officer Chris Drummonds, United States Coast Guard retired, assisting Gold Star wife Arlene Murray Adams, honoring her husband, Staff Sergeant Dennis Jean Murray, United States Marine Corps, assisted by Cadet Master Sergeant Zoe Kesapratist, will now lay the wreath honoring all those who served and are currently serving in the United States Coast Guard. United States Merchant Marine Memorial. Lieutenant Colonel Patrick Calcotti, United States Army, assisting Gold Star mother Jody Flanning, honoring her son, Private First Class Charles B. Hester, United States Army, assisted by Cadet Staff Sergeant Evan Necraz, will now lay the wreath in honoring all those who served and are currently serving in the United States Merchant Marines. POW MIA Memorial. Stig Berg, United States Marine Corps, retired, assisting Gold Star Mother Lori Finlayson, honoring her son, Lance Corporal David Finlayson, United States Marine Corps, assisted by Cadet Staff Sergeant Albert Brown, will now lay the wreath, honoring the 93,129 United States service members from all branches of the service whose last known status was either prisoner of war or missing in action. These individuals have never returned to their families and their homes. We shall not forget you. Cadet Commander, give your squadron at ease. We will now pay tribute to and honor our fallen heroes. Members of the Maple Valley Black Diamond VFW post 5052 will honor the fallen with a ceremonial gun salute followed by the playing of taps by bugler Fred Byzinker. Attendees not in uniform should remove their caps and place their hand over their heart. Attendees in uniform should render the hand salute during the gun salute and at the first note of taps. Ladies and gentlemen, please stand for the gun salute and taps. Cadet Commander, give your squadron attention and present arms.
Cadet Commander, give your squadron at ease. Sydney will now sing America the Beautiful. to invite Colonel Dolnick to give a few brief remarks and reflaying instructions. Thank you very much, Lieutenant North. And audience may be seated. On behalf of the 1,700 Civil Air Patrol members in Washington Wing, I'd like to thank everybody who's here, and especially the Gold Star families for your presence and your sacrifice. I'd like to thank our special guests, Congresswoman Schreier, Colonel Meyer, Ms. Porter, and Ms. Harstock. I would like to thank the Tahoma National Cemetery Director, Thomas Yokes, and the entire staff, the groundskeepers for hosting Reads Across America, and for all the support that you provide our families during the toughest times, the loss of loved ones, their hero. Lions Club for communication support. The Patriot Guard Riders for helping download 235 boxes of wreaths, 2,820 total. VFW Post 5052 for the rifle team. Fred Beisinger, the bugler. All the veterans groups, community groups, Civil Air Patrol cadets, scouts, military organizations, all those you see. I'd like to thank Sydney for the beautiful singing this morning. The 39 sponsor groups for their work securing the wreath sponsorships. The host CAP unit for location support over Lake Composite Squadron. And thank you so much for um, Senior Master Sergeant Cindy Kumpok running around somewhere as she has been. And Lieutenant Chet Morgan uh, for putting this all together. And thank you, Lieutenant North, for being our MC. How you can help. There are nearly 70,000 veterans buried here. Due to how the cemetery is organized with large fields and upright columbariums, we need approximately 35,000 wreaths to cover all the graves. 
This year we only sponsored 2,820. Our goal for 2024 and beyond is to raise awareness for Reads Across America and the mission to remember, honor, and teach in our community. We hope to raise 15,000 reads for 2024, and with your help, we can. Beginning with the wreath matching campaign, which will run from today through January 16th for each wreath sponsored through a sponsor group, the Wreaths Across America organization will match one for one. You can sponsor reads each month and then at the beginning of November, sponsor reads for your grave specific requests. You can share the mission of Reads Across America with your friends, family, co-workers, and classmates. If you want to participate in wreath matching, feel free to stop by the reception tent. If you have questions about read sponsorship or how to become a sponsorship group, please stop by the reception tent for more information. And finally, we still need your help with wreath cleanup. That'll be on January 15th beginning at 0900. Watch the Tahoma National Facebook page for more details. We don't want them getting, uh, getting ugly out there. We want to make sure this is nice and clean to remember our fallen. For laying reeds, I want to start by reading a note from Moral Worcester, founder of Reeds Across America. To all Reeds Across America volunteers, thank you for being here today. Before you get started, there are some items to be brought to your attention to make your experience even better. Each wreath you'll be placing is handmade and unique. They are made of balsam fir grown in the southeast region of Maine with pride. Some of the needles do become detached during the making, packing, and transportation of the wreaths. Please keep in mind that every wreath has tens of thousands of needles and it's normal for this to happen. Because the wreaths are packed tightly in boxes, it will take two to three hours for them to fully relax to their natural circular shape. Before placing a wreath on a headstone, take a minute to re-fluff the greens and rearrange the bow. When the wreath is finally laid at the headstone, please make sure the bow is at the 12 o'clock position. It is important to have that intimate moment with the hero you are honoring, but please remember to take a step back and look at the complete picture of what all of us have accomplished through the mission to remember, honor, and teach. Several of you here today have sponsored reads that you specifically requested to place yourself, which you sponsored for a specific person. What this means, it when you placed your original order, you provided the name of the person and the details about their service, date of death, and burial location. Or you sent an email to Sergeant Kompok and she added your request to the grave specific list. For all of you who have specific reads, you will pick up your reads at the tent located in front of Columbrium 5. Not to worry, if you sponsored reads but didn't provide a veteran's name, those reads are part of the remaining 2,500 reads, which we need your help to place throughout the cemetery. These reads are available at the maintenance building, which is behind me, to the right in the grove of trees. Follow the masses. Once you reach the distribution point, there will be attendants to help you collect a few reeds to lay. We encourage groups and volunteers to only take one or two reeds per person based on the number of volunteers here today and the fact that we have 2,500 reeds remaining to lay. If you have someone specific you wish to honor, please feel free to take the wreath you are given and do so. For the rest of the reeds, please work from the front of the main fields on both sides, moving this direction till all the reeds are placed. As most of you have already done the math, there will be many graves left uncovered. Please take a moment and stop at the grave to pay respects and honor that veteran, thanking them for their service. As Colonel Myers suggested, take a look at the name and think about that person. I'd also encourage you to remember that name and when you get home look them up what did they do what was their sacrifice remember them and their family and the loved ones they left behind 
I'd like to thank you all for being here, and I will turn it back to Lieutenant North. Thank you, sir. Thank you all for attending today. Ladies and gentlemen, please stand for the retrieval of the colors. Cadet Commander, give your squadron attention. Color Guard, retrieve the colors. Cadet Commander, dismiss your squadron. Thank you all. That concludes the formal ceremony. We will begin the wreath laying now. If you registered for a specific wreath, as Colonel Dolnick described, that will be to your right, my left. If you would like to lay